Hey everyone, Newman here with 910, and today we are going to be changing out the bolts on a crown or the fasteners on a crown to stainless steel. As you can see here, here's the two kits that I provide. Uh, I know they're labeled Mark 1 and Mark 2, but really what this is is the crown dovetail and the crown picatinny. So as you can see here, we have a crown Mark 1, but it has a picatinny rail. Since we are installing on the Picatinny today, we will be using the Mark II kit. So we're going to actually go and set this to the side because I have the spare bolts on hand. Just to go over real quickly the different bolts on the action. Uh, there's the four barrel screw bolts. One, two, three, four. There's one up top that plugs the transport hole. There is the trigger screws. So you've got one, two, three, four, and a fifth one, and a sixth one. Then you've got your safety screw. Then you've got your hammer adjustment screw, which also has another screw inside that's holding it in place. There's a screw inside of the cocking lever. Then there's your screw, there are two screws, or actually there's one, two, three, four, five screws on your power knob. Those are all the screws in a crown, so it's not that difficult. The only two extra screws are in the stock itself, which we'll address at the end of the video. So the first step is going to be taking off all the old fasteners uh, just to show their disassembly, and then we're going to reassemble all the new fasteners. Also in this process, we're going to go ahead and take off the gauges because these gauges are kind of fragile, so we don't want them to get damaged in the process. I'm going to quickly just go ahead and take those off and come back to Okay, so now we have the gauges off, we're going to go to the easiest screws first, which are your barrel screws. Your barrel locking screws, these four on the side that are at an angle, they require a 3mm. And they come out just like that. So I'm going to go ahead quickly go do the other three. Now that we have these four out, we can go ahead and put everything away and go on to the next screw. Alright, so the next screw is your plug screw right here, which is also, uh, oh yeah, just call it your, pelt, your transfer port plug screw. Some people use this to lock down to the barrel, that's actually improper. Uh, this is supposed to just sit, float uh, right above the brass inlet, and inside these threads here to plug the hole that's made to drill the transfer port. It will be Loctited, but it should be fairly easy to break free. Yeah, see like this one barely had any Loctite. But there you go. Now we can set that to the side. Also that was a 4mm. Okay, so the next screws we're going to do is your power wheel. Easiest way to do this is to first take off your uh, left side screw, which is the one that's going through the knob. It will be a 2.5. There you go. I'm just going to lay all the bolts down as we go. Then we can remove the left side, or the right side. My apologies, it's the right side. That's a short little screw. Then after we've done this, the whole power wheel assembly will come out. Be sure not to lose your spring and ball bearing. So go ahead and set those down. The spring can stay in there. On the back side here, you'll either have a screw that requires a 1.5 or 1.27 millimeter Allen. Ours today is going to use a 1.27. Set that down. Set the action down. Then we've got our last two screws, which is the ones holding on the power knob here. Going to be a 1.5. There's your first screw. 
There's your second screw. Okay, so now that we have all the screws off, the power adjustment assembly here, we're going to go ahead and set that all to the side. The next screws we're going to take out are your hammer assembly screws, or your hammer adjustment assembly. It's going to be a 1.5 here in the back. So it's right here, as you can see. And what that screw is, is it's holding this in place. So as soon as we remove that, we can remove this piece for easier access. This is called your hammer spring adjuster. And this would be your hammer spring adjustment screw. So this is gonna be a 1.5. Uh, it will be Loctite, so you'll need to heat it up or have a really high torque 1.5. So I'm going to uh, be right back. I'm going to go ahead and get this out. Okay, so I got the screw out now. The 1.5, as you may tell, there's a lot of Loctite on there. In any case, uh, since this is out, now we'll be able to replace it. One important thing uh, you may want to remember if you don't want to reset your tune afterwards is to make sure that you capture the measurement of how far it was sticking out originally. That's if you're not going to retune. I'm going to be retuning this rifle afterwards, so it doesn't matter for me. All right, so we're going to set this all to the side now and we'll move on. Okay, so the next thing we're going to do is we're going to pop out the trigger assembly here. Uh, you don't have to pop out the sear or the, sear, the lower sear pin. All you got to do is pop out the trigger wheel pin. So what I like to use is a 564 pin punch, but if you have metric, that's totally fine. You use a 1.2. I mean a 1.5 or a 2 millimeter pin punch. If you use an Allen key, you have to use a 1.5 or smaller. In any case, let's just take it and gently punch it out, just like so. I have my thumb here because there is a spring under here, so whenever I lift up, the spring wants to pop off. Alright, so before we get to the trigger, I'm going to take care of the safety real fast. It's going to be really difficult to remove if you don't have the safety wing installed. So I'm going to install that real fast uh, so I can show you the process. So I just want to mention I had the safety wing off before because I already had the rifle out of the stock and you have to remove the safety wing as well as your power wheel in order to take the stock off. The power wheel has a little screw in it that requires a 2mm screw and the safety wing has a uh, small screw that requires a 2.5 millimeter. In any case, you won't be able to remove this one without the safety wing installed because you have to help hold on to it somehow. This safety screw over here that holds the actual safety into the rifle is going to be a 2 millimeter. And once you've got the safety wing held, it's very easy to come out. Set that down. Now we can go to the other side. Use the 2.5, hold the safety wing in place, and twist that free. Now we can move on to the trigger. As you can see here for the trigger assembly, there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven screws for the trigger assembly. So this is probably the most uh, fastener intensive place of the rifle. To start off with, we can use a 1.27 to remove the trigger shoe. I mean, once it's loose, it'll come right off. And it's that little, little tiny screw. Very hard to see, little tiny thing. So after the trigger shoe, the next uh, step is actually the rest of the trigger itself. Uh, just a few points. So the second stage screw, which is this one with the spring-loaded ball bearing, will not be replaced. Uh, there's no stainless steel version of this screw, so you don't have to worry about replacing it. Uh, so you just have your one screw. Move that down. Two screw. Uh, three screw four and five. So one, uh, two, three, and five here. Those are all 1.5 millimeter like that. So you can see here and I pre-loosened all these. Uh, the screws will have Loctite on them. 
Uh, so you will have to either heat them up slightly or else use a high torque driver and make sure not to strip them out. Uh, I did actually strip out one of the screws and we'll get to that in a second. Okay, so we just pull out this screw right here. This is your safety screw. As you can tell, well, this is the rear of the rifle. This would be the front. So going from the rear, you've got the second stage. Then you have your safety screw. Set that down. And then you have your spring screw, which is generally underneath your trigger post. And then your spring will just fall off there. So there you go. There's your spring screw. The next would be your trigger post screw. Get that nice and loose. Now slide right off. So that's just a dovetail. It's a really small dovetail in there. And then your last screw here is your first stage screw. Now keep in mind, once you remove all these screws, you will have to retune your trigger when you put it back onto the rifle. The safety may not work, so you have to be careful with that. So that's the last screw that's going to require 1.5. This screw right here is typically a 2 millimeter, right here for the trigger wheel, as well as the second stage. But once again, like I said, we're not replacing the second stage because it does not have a replacement. Also, as mentioned earlier, this second stage or this trigger wheel screw, which is requiring the two millimeter, is unfortunately stripped out from a previous user. So I'm gonna go ahead. I'm gonna use an easy out real fast and just go ahead and pop that off. Unfortunately, that's not gonna be on the video. Uh, but essentially, you'll be taking a two millimeter and backing this screw out, and then the trigger wheel will come off. I'll be right back. All right. So as you can see here, I got the trigger roll off. It was up there. This is the screw. Like I said, it was stripped out. I'm sure you can see that. In any case, we're going to set that down there. We're going to be replacing anyways. So now the trigger is done. So I failed to mention before, there is actually a couple more screws. Uh, there's one screw here for the pivot, holding in the pivot pin for the lever. And then there's the screw obviously holding the handle onto the lever. So the handle onto the lever is going to be a 2.5. And it should come off very easily. It's only held in place by a couple threads. There you go. And we're just going to keep the lever on there. Well, there you go. There's the lever off. We'll go ahead and put it back on there though. Set the screw to the side. And then the last screw is going to be this screw here holding in the pivot pin for the lever. And there you go. So there you have it. There's all the screws out of the crown. And now we're just going to quickly go back through and reinstall everything. I'm not going to be describing each piece or anything as I reinstall. I'm just going to show the walkthrough of reinstalling everything. Okay, so before we get started doing all the installation of the bolts, I just want to do another reminder saying that I will not be doing any talking during this walkthrough. It will be simply the video footage of me installing everything. A couple of the screws are already in place a little bit beforehand just to make things easier. Uh, but this will just be a quick run through. There'll be a little bit of music in the background um, and then it'll just be a visual visual representation of the installation of these stainless steel fasteners. Okay, so we're going to start with the trigger and we're going to move through the parts as we go. And at the end, uh, we will have a fully assembled rifle.
Alright folks, that's it. That's the complete change out of the stainless steel fasteners for the FX Crown. This one was particularly with the FX Crown with the Picatinny rail. Very similar for the ones with the dovetail. If you have any questions or comments, please leave it in the comment section below or shoot me an email over to info at 910airguntuningandrepairsllc.com. Also feel free to stop by and visit the website. Uh, that's where you will find the stainless steel fastener kits for the FX Crown as well as several other FX air guns such as the Impact, Maverick, and Wildcat series. Alright, and as always, happy shooting!